Welcome to our missionary stories for children. We're starting the most wonderful, wonderful missionary story. And this is no darkness at all. And as we come to this lesson this week, we just pray that each of you will see the need of getting the Word of God out to these precious children all over the world. And as we come to thee today and, and, and ask you to follow along with us in the Word of God, God's Word says in Proverbs, we pray that you children are obeying these truths. And we're also teaching the Ten Commandments with these because we need to know the Ten Commandments by heart. In Proverbs 4, verse 1, Hear, ye children, the instructions of a father, and attend to no understanding. And then in verse 10, Hear, O oh, my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. Verse 20 of chapter 4 of Proverbs, My son, attend to my words, incline thine heart unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Also, in chapter 5, my son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow thine ear to my understanding. Hear me, in verse 7, hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. And then, also in chapter 7 of Proverbs, verse 1, my son, keep my words, and lay up my commandments with thee. You see how important it is for us to know the Word of God and we're to hide it in our hearts that we will not sin against God. And then in Proverbs 13, 13, he says, Whoso despises the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandments shall be rewarded. Isn't this the most exciting thing as we think about God's Word and what He commands us to do in it? We need to know what His Word says so that we can receive the blessings that He teaches us that we're going to receive when we obey His commandments. And we have seen in these lessons about Hamid and how he worshipped a God called Ali and Mohammed is his prophet. And think about this. These people turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. Not only did they turn from idols when they heard the living and true God, but they were waiting for His Son to come from heaven. That's what we are to be doing today, waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ, the rapture. And He's coming soon and we must be ready. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we truly praise thy marvelous name. We thank thee for the promises that thou hast given to these precious children, that if they honor thy father and thy mother, the first commandment with a promise is that they will have a long life. We pray that we will hide thy word in our hearts, that we will not sin against thee. We pray that Satan will be defeated. Thy word says all things whatsoever you desire when you pray. Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And this is what we're praying for today. For every person that's listening to be saved. To receive the gift of everlasting life. And to have their sins forgiven. To be brought out of darkness into light. Out of the power of Satan unto thee. And we rejoice in all that thou art going to do today. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. 
We have seen the promises that God gives to us as we study His Word and obey His Word, and we have always told you that obedience brings blessings and joy. Disobedience brings sorrow and sadness. So we want to be a happy Christian. Like God's Word says, He's given us His joy. And we saw how this little boy, he was 11 years old, Hamid was, and he had a little sister called Kinza. Now Kinza was blind, and every person that's listening today, you are spiritually blind. You are dead in trespasses and sin if you have never received the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. And this is a message that God wants every person to hear, just like the people that heard of the true and living God. They turned to God from idols to worship the true and living God. And there's only one God, and our Savior Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of God, praying continually for each of us that know Him as Savior. And the angels, we have divine protection the angels watch over us. So we saw how this little boy obeyed his mother, took his little sister Kinza, and he found the light of the world, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what he wants for every person in the world. That's why he came. And when he took his little sister and found the place that his mother told about, he put her down in this little place, in this home of this nurse. Because he loved her so much, he knew that when he put her down, that this nurse would care for her because she loved the Lord Jesus Christ. You cannot love your husband, your wife, or your children unless you have his perfect love dwelling in you. This is why he loved his little sister so much he was willing to do what his mother said to save his sister. We should be willing to even go the extra mile to save those around us. And we saw how, with tears in his eyes, he asked the Lord Jesus Christ to come into his heart and save him. He had tears. We're to have tears over sin. And then we saw last week how a little girl came into the picture, and her name was Jenny. This was the nurse's niece, and she came from England all the way to Morocco because she, the doctor told her she needed to go where there was warm weather because of the damp weather in England. Sometimes we wonder why we get sick. Well, if you're a child of God, it's always for our good and for His glory. And someone is praying for you that loves you. And when trials come, God is testing us to see if we will be obedient. So when she came she was, the little boys that lived on the street always went to the cars to try to make a little money to help take their luggage to the motel. And of course they wouldn't let her get out of the car, little Jenny, because she was rich. She didn't, they didn't want her to be where the dirty little boys were. And I remember the riches didn't make her a sinner. She was a sinner because God's Word says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. This is our Bible verse, Romans 3, 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. This is your Bible verse in all of these lessons. You must learn this. And this, that wasn't why she was a sinner. She was born a sinner. We're going to find that out in these lessons. And, of course, she saw this little girl, Kinza and she reached to give her her toy. And you see what happened is little Kinza was blind, so she didn't reach to get the toy. And she said, Auntie, what's wrong with your little girl? She doesn't reach and get my, little, my toy. I know she doesn't have nice toys like I do. And Jenny's aunt got a hold of her hand, and she said, Jenny, she is blind. She jerked her hand, Back and she said, well, you could have told me sooner. Jenny's aunt, in her heart, the nurse, the missionary nurse, began to pray, Lord, help me to teach her about thee while she's here. So she went down the little narrow street where her aunt lived, and she saw all these dirty little children coming in and out. And she put the key in the door, and when she put the key in the door to go in, she said, 
Auntie, don't tell me you live here. How awful. So, after they got inside, the little children that were there to be cared for, she wanted to help. And she helped her aunt. She boiled water, and she got the medicine that was needed and gave it to her. And she was running all over trying to help her aunt care for these little children. And then after they all left, she says, when I grow up, I want to be like you and order people around and be a missionary nurse. She said, Jenny, something very important is going to have to happen to you before you become a missionary nurse. She said, well, what is it? She said, whatever I need, my mother and father will buy it for me. And she says, I'm smart enough, I can learn. She said, we will talk about it later. Now, you must be quiet while I spend time with your mother and father. So they, she cooked for them. She stayed there a few weeks. And after a few weeks, they went on a picnic. Her and little Kinza, that was blind, and her aunt. So while they were having a picnic, she said, Auntie, what must I do to become a missionary nurse? She says, well, Jenny, if you just want to be a nurse and help these people, she said, you go to school and learn. But she said, then after you help them, they do not have enough food. And she said, they don't know how to care for themselves. And they die very young. She says, well, Auntie, why bother? She said, Jenny, she said, I give these people medicine, and they see Christ's love in me. You see, Jenny, they know nothing about love. They are afraid of dying. I teach them the real spirit of God that will take them to heaven if they receive Jesus Christ as Savior. The Spirit is the real you and your soul. And she said, these people love the Word of God, and I give them the truth of eternal life. Then they're not afraid of death, and they see that God loves them through me. And they are willing to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior because they've never heard this truth before. And then the medicine that she gives them helps them physically and they see that this is true love. But she says, Jenny, she said, you see, it's not who, what you know, but whom you know. And Jenny, you can never tell someone else about the Lord Jesus Christ unless you know him yourself and know he's living inside of you. And she says, well, how can I know he's living inside of me? She says, well, she said, you know, she said, you take a lantern. Of course, they knew what a lantern was because that's the kind of light they had. And she said, how does the light get in the lantern? She said, someone has to put it in there. Well, she said, yes, and that's what happens to a child of God. Before the Spirit of God can come and dwell in your heart, you must know that your sins are forgiven. Oh, she said, Auntie, I don't think I have any sins to be forgiven. She said, Jenny, you were not here five minutes before I knew you were a sinner. You are selfish. You talk back to your parents. You disobey them. You don't have respect for your parents. And you are always wanting your own way. And that is sin in God's sight. And she said, this is why. She said, God's word says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And this is why you need to know this Bible verse. And she said, oh, I'm a good girl. My mother says I'm always a good girl. And then when she told her that the Bible was true, she couldn't take that. She left and ran away, and she said, I must go to tell my mom and dad where we are. They'll be thinking about me. So that night, she went to bed, and when she went to bed, she couldn't sleep. 
You see, that's what happens. You can't sleep when you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. And when you know him as Savior, God's word says your sleep shall be sweet. And then, besides, when you can't sleep at night, you're to meditate on God's word. That's where perfect peace comes in because he says thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. So she went down to the motel where her dad was in the uh, lobby and she said, Father, take me to my aunt's right now. And he was just ready to say no. And this time, instead of talking back to her father, not having respect for him, she had seen a change in her aunt. And this time she had tears in her eyes and she said, please, father. So she went to her aunt and her aunt said to her, what are you doing here this time of night? Oh, she said, auntie, I remembered the words that you said and I have come here to find out about the Lord Jesus Christ. And she told her that he is the true and living God. I am the first and I am the last and beside me there is no God. You see, that's Isaiah 44, 6. You, this is another Bible verse you must learn. And she also told her how she could receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. And you know, that's what God wants for you today. I want you to think about this because he says, I have sinned and we saw all of us are the same. You see this little rich girl, she was not any different than that poor little boy. He was very poor. They both needed Christ. And now she's wanting to know. And then he says, God loves me. You see, the greatest love that we have is from God. He says, for God so loved you every person in the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And this is God's word. And then Christ died for me. That is the gospel. That means good news. Christ died for me. And then I receive him as my savior. You see, I must receive him because he's a gift. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. You see, he has the all power. He's the one that teaches me, and that is John 1, 12. And then when I receive him, I have the gift, and this is I am saved. You see, for by grace are you saved. He must be received because it's a personal savior. Because your parents are Christians doesn't mean you're a Christian. And then he says, in. And all of you remember these Bible verses and write them down because he says in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The first thing we want you to understand is there is nothing else can be added to what Christ has done for you. Because his word says it is the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sin. And then what am I saved from? I'm saved from all sin. All means all, and that's all all means. I am born again. And then, after I am saved, I want to live for him and obey him. Because when he says, all we like sheep have gone astray, we've turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. You see, you, every sin that we have ever committed, all of our past sins, all of the sins we're going to commit. But as soon as you know that you're a child of God and you are born again by the Spirit of God, you cannot sin and enjoy it. You cannot sin and enjoy it. Acts 16, 31, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So have you done that? If you haven't, you can do so today because this is what God wants you to do. Believe. And there is nothing else you can do. There is nobody in the world that he cannot save. Because he says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So you must do that today. And that's what happened to this little girl. And she was brought out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan unto God. And then, of course, little Hamid was 11 years old and he could not even read. Think about that. 
he had not never learned to read and you th his his stepfather was going to sell his sister and he thought if i could have paid enough i would have paid more than the beggar so my sister could be saved how could jesus love me so much that he paid for my sin you see he had to die and his debt is the greatest debt that's ever been given for you and for me. He gave his life that we might live. So Hamid was so excited over this, he loved the Word of God. And he read every day from the Bible. After he learned to read, he was thinking, while Jenny and the, her father and mother were there, the missionary nurse wasn't giving as much attention to him. And he was jealous. But then after he was jealous, he was ashamed when he saw how much they loved Kinza and that it was a sin to be jealous, that he said, I will have plenty of time to get attention from the nurse after they leave. And this is so exciting because that's another way you can know you're a child of God if you love God's Word. Remember, you must love the Word of God. You must love hearing His Word because this is the only way you can grow. So one day when he was working, he thought his heart would stop. He saw his stepfather. And his stepfather was watching Jenny, her father, and her mother, and the nurse while they were at market. When he saw his stepfather, he couldn't believe that this was his stepfather. He knew that he was in danger, that if his stepfather saw him, he would take him away, beat him, and make him steal Kinza away and take her back home. So he realized that he was not safe but he knew that his little sister Kinza was safe with all these people. But his stepfather, as he, as he ran away, his stepfather stole his little sister Kinza. When he ran up into the hills, he was going to stay there a few days. But after he got up there, the boys that he ran in the street with saw him go up. And when the nurse saw what happened, she came and she ye yelled for him. Hamid, Hamid, I know you're here because your friends told me they saw you come up here. And she, he came out from his hiding place and she said, Hamid, we are in trouble. We're in trouble. What's wrong? Kinza is gone. And he said, I know where she is. You know where she is? How? And she, he told her how he had saw the stepfather. And she, he said, I knew Kinza would be safe with you. And Jenny's mom and dad and Jenny. She said, Hamid, we left Kinza with Jenny just for a few minutes. And just like that, she was gone. And she didn't even see who picked her up and took her away. And you see today, you mothers and you children that are listening, the same thing can happen just like that in a moment if we do not watch our children. It's much worse today than in those days. And he says, I can't believe you would leave Kinza with that niece. She said, Hamid, we both did wrong. I left her with, with Jenny, but you knew she was in danger and you ran away. But she said, we must go get her. He said, but you can't. How would you know where I live? She said, I have a plan. You can go with us and show us where you live. Do you know what my stepfather would do if I sh should go back there? She said, oh no. You can just go and show us where you live after dark. Jenna's father can take us in the car and you can stay hid. Well, sure enough, 
when he got in this car to go, this fine car, his little friends were jealous. They would have loved to have been in this car. But not Hamid. Hamid was afraid because he did not know what was going to happen. And as you children that are listening today, you must tune in next week and find out what happened to little Kinza and Hamid, a true story that we have given to you today to show you boys and girls how much we have to be thankful for. And let me ask those of you that are listening, and as we continue this story next week, do you even know the books to the Bible? Have you thought about the books to the Bible? How many books are there in the whole Bible? Well, there are 66. How many in the Old Testament? 39. How many in the New Testament? 27. 3 times 9 is 27. So if you know that, you know. So let's sing the books to the New Testament today because we're wanting you to learn God's Word. Now, if you follow along with us in these lessons, you will never be deceived by Satan because Satan is an angel of light today that is deceiving those that do not know God's Word. So we must be very careful what we listen to and who, what we see with our eyes, that that will not grieve the Spirit of God. So let's sing this as we go off today so you can learn the books to the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st Timothy, 2nd Timothy, Titus, Thilemon, Hebrews, James, 1st Peter, 2nd Peter, 3 John, Jude, and Revelation. And those of you that know about heaven, where do we find it? In the book of Revelation. The last book of the Bible is always the very best. Jesus is the way, be it is.